Hello. So I was in the market for some NeoVim plugins, and as often happens whenever I search for plugins, I found a lot more cool plugins than I was originally anticipating or looking for. And, you know, I try to keep my configuration relatively slim. Like, I try not to install every single cool plugin that I find, because otherwise I would have a hundred plugins, you know? Um, so what I figured I would do is I would install what I actually needed and what I was actually looking for, and then show you guys the rest of them. So that way you guys can get use out of these plugins, especially the ones that don't necessarily fit my own personal workflow. And to start with, something I was actually looking for was a way to render markdown syntax directly in line in NeoVim without any sort of an external program. And if you want to think about it this way, it's maybe sort of a step in the direction of Emacs org mode. If you want something that's sort of, you know, NeoVim plus markdown plus a far more minimal experience than Emacs org mode, um, you know, without needing all of the features that it offers, just rendering the markdown in line so that you can see it as you're working on it, I think is pretty helpful or at least it fits my use case. So um, for example, I mean, you can already see what this plugin is doing in terms of rendering when I'm in normal mode, it's just gonna render everything out. Whereas if I go into insert mode, it sets me back into the syntax that I can then edit. Um, but you know, it can also do things like code blocks. So I could do, you know, bash and then echo test and it's gonna render that out properly. I could do, um, I don't know, Python import sys and you'll see it's all doing the syntax highlighting properly there. I can also do uh, to-do lists, for example, so I can do a dash um, and then a bracket with an X in it and then my to-do list item is done. And I could say that and that's gonna have a checkbox next to it. Um, I could also do call out, so I could do a block quote and then I could do um, warning and then I could do my warning message here and that's going to highlight it and stick a caution icon next to it. And you can configure all of this. You have full control over this plugin in terms of the configuration. Um, you can set up the icons for all of those web URLs as it renders them. So you can see it's rendering, you know, a, a little icon next to the link here. Um, same thing down here, it's rendering an icon. So you can customize all of those or add more if you wish. Um, you can customize all of the callouts and you have plenty more customization as well, especially in terms of, well, you can see in the examples here, like it can really take care of everything from headings all the way down to LaTeX if you're using that. But something else it can do is allows you to actually select which markdown files you would like it to render on. Um, I have it turned on to render on all markdown files, but you could, for example, say only render it on files that have a readme in the, in the string in the name of the file. So you have full customization there. And honestly, I think of the various plugins available to do this sort of markdown rendering just directly in NeoVim, this one's pretty much the best one out there. Now, something else that I found, um, a little bit more of a minimal plugin, nvim-number toggle. So this is essentially just for toggling relative numbers as you go into insert mode. Um, because the point of relative numbers, if you don't know the numbers, you can see right now this is just, you know, normal numbering. Whereas if I press escape and go back to normal mode, you'll see it's now relative numbering on the side. The point of relative numbers is jumping around. So if I do like 25J, I'm gonna jump down 25 lines. If I do uh, 25K, I'm gonna jump back up, etc. That's the that's the point of relative numbering. The point is jumping around really easily. So um, toggling that off when you go into normal mode or insert mode, sorry, makes total sense because the, the point sort of disappears once you're actually in insert mode because you're actually gonna be typing something, right? So anyways, this is, this is really nice because it just does it automatically. Now, something else that I found that I don't personally have a use for, but I think this this might be the type of plugin to solve like your biggest pet peeve ever. Comfy line numbers. So the point of this, um, you can actually see in the example here, it's taking those relative numbers and limiting them to only numbers on the left side of your keyboard. And you can actually customize um, which of those numbers. So you could do, you know, only one through three, for example, and it will do one, two, three, and then, you know, 11, 12, 13, etc. You can customize that. But the point of this is essentially making it so you're not going to have to lift up your right hand in order to move from J and K up to like seven and eight and nine and the numbers on the right hand side of your keyboard. So I can totally see the point here. This isn't something that annoys me personally enough to make me wanna install it, but I figured I should mention this because this might be something that you actually really want if this is, I don't know, something that annoys you having to move your hand off of J and K constantly. All right, so something else I did want was a plugin akin to Twilight. So I went with Twilight. There's a few different options for this sort of a dimming experience, but essentially what it's gonna do is it's going to dim the surrounding context as you're working and you have 
full customization over how many lines it's going to dim, etc. Um, but essentially, it just is going to have those highlighted lines that you're working on. Everything else is dimmer, so that way your focus isn't going to be jumping around to all of the pretty colors all over your screen. And yeah, like I said, there's uh, where's the config? Here it is. There's full customization over all of it. And um, on the uh, page for it, it actually points out that it would pair well with Zen mode, which is going to give you an experience that looks something like this with not only the surrounding context dimmed, but the the other UI elements removed from the screen as well. And I can totally see the point of that. Um, personally, I think just the dimming is enough for me. Just dimming the surrounding or dimming the other non-surrounding lines is good enough. But um, if you want that full uh, Zen experience, then Zen mode would pair well with this plugin. All right, something else I found, Envin Biscuits, which is essentially a rewrite of Assorted Biscuits. Um, and what it's gonna do is it's just going to show you the context for the specific pair. So um, a bracket or a parentheses, it's just gonna show you the beginning line of it, which makes total sense. I can totally see the point here. Um, if I were coding absolutely constantly, I think I would install this, but considering I'm trying to like limit the number of plugins I have installed, I was like, all right, maybe this one, maybe this one I don't, I don't really need it. Even though I honestly, I like it. I'm thinking about getting it now. I'm thinking about installing it. But anyways, I figured I would point it out since I'm sure one of you guys will find this really useful. Something else I found, URL view. Um, again, something that like I was thinking, oh, I should install this, but no, I don't want 50 plugins. So I don't know, but this is essentially just gonna aggregate the URLs in your specific buffer into just a really easy picker that you can then just open the URL. Um, super easy, especially if you're using URLs constantly and you're always, you've always got something open that you're having to jump to a URL from. Um, I don't think I open URLs just directly from NeoVim enough to warrant installing this, but I'm sure somebody does. So this is for you. Um, there's a couple other plugins that are going to have similar functionality to this. So you could browse around if you wanted, but yeah, this exists. Um, something else I found that was kind of cool, ven.envim. And as you could see in the example before it reset there, um, it's essentially going to allow you to draw diagrams, ASCII diagrams directly in NeoVim. Um, and I think this would essentially prevent you from having to leave NeoVim to an external program if you're trying to draw diagrams or charts in, in documents that you're working on. So um, this I could totally see being really useful if that's something you're working on. Personally, I don't have a use case for it, but I figured I should mention it just in case anybody uh, would find use out of this one. Something else I found, um, nvim-toggler, essentially just for toggling and inverting different statements. So true to false or on to off, or custom statements as well. You have full control over the configuration. Um, in the example, they say you could invert Vim to be Emacs, and obviously you could set up whatever sort of inversion you were using. So if this is something that you're using constantly in terms of true-false statements or on-off statements, and you need to be inverting them, and you just wanna do it just directly with the keybind without having to type it in the other word, I think this would make total sense to have. Anyways, that's about what I found for today. Um, my configuration is on my GitHub. Um, I will update it with what I added to it. Oh, I also added the growth box theming, um, as you probably noticed. Um, I also added a couple other stuff, but this these were the things that I added like just recently. So I figured it would make sense to do a video while I still had them sort of fresh in mind. Anyways, that's about it. I will see you next time. Peace.